Hey, do you like games where you can destroy stuff? Today we got a list of 10 games where you can destroy almost everything. We got a variety of different games across all genres and generations, so let's get started off with number 10. The Earth Defense Force series, or EDF, isn't always necessarily known for its destruction, because technically, you're the good guys most of the time, but you can cause a lot of damage in these games thanks to just how large scale these battles really are. If you've never played one of these games, essentially you are a Earth Force fighting against an alien invader that is essentially giant bugs. Yeah, it's that simple, and that's really the charm of this game. And these creatures can cause massive amounts of destruction, but sometimes so can you, depending on what type of explosive weaponry you have. You can finish a mission or finish a level with just a bunch of leveled buildings all around you. This is fine, And even though you look at these games and you might think they don't look graphically that impressive, still toppling a building always just looks pretty cool. I don't know what that says about us, but this is also just a good side note to point out that uh, if you've never played any of these games and you like what you see here, good, simple, fun, arcadey blasting, definitely check one out. We don't talk about them enough here on this channel. Next over at number 9, sticking to the similar topic of Alien Invaders, let's talk Destroy All Humans, specifically the newer remake ones, like Destroy All Humans Reprobe that released last year. This kind of remake reimagining of the original game definitely still gives you all that satisfying destruction, and it's just more impressive now with beefed up graphics. This is another game where like the main objective isn't always necessarily to destroy everything, but there's always going to be collateral damage with whatever you're doing, so you're going to finish a level with a a surprising amount of the buildings and structures completely blown apart. Now you can't destroy completely everything, but it's pretty damn close. And the game flexes it right from the beginning. You remember that first memorable level on the farm where you just raise absolute hell and destroy barns, cows, farmhouses, and everything from your spaceship? It's really, really satisfying still to this day. These games were loved for just kind of being the evil alien simulator, and they totally succeed because when you hop in your UFO and you're blasting buildings and hurling tanks and exploding everything, it's just awesome. Next over at number 8, we have a game called Megaton Rainfall. You've probably never heard of it, but it is an incredible game worth playing in VR. Essentially, you're Superman. You're the super-powered being that can shoot energy blasts from their hands, fly super fast, cause all sorts of destruction. And while the game does have some clever presentation stuff, today we're just talking about the fact that you could blow everything up. It's awesome. It's an open world, actually like open universe simulation. So while you're on the ground, you can destroy some buildings, fly through some buildings Superman style if you want, but you can also just instantly fly up into outer space. And when you're up high, you have the power to shoot massive energy blasts and cause craters, leave absolute massive craters on the planet's surface. You really can lay waste to everything you want here, whether you're just kind of free roaming and messing around or actually engaging in the game and fighting off against enemies. It's all procedurally generated areas of the planet, cities, buildings, structures, stuff like that. And while it certainly isn't the best game by any means, just the ability to destroy stuff like this super fast in VR is incredibly impressive. The game's a bit older, it looks a bit older, but the destruction is still mm, chef's kiss. Next over at number seven, we have the Katamari series, which yes, is not exactly what will come to mind immediately if you think about destruction, but I mean, seriously, think about it. You are a little person rolling a ball around and everything that ball rolls over gets stuck to it and that ball grows bigger the more it's stuck to it and it just kind of snowballs into an absolutely massive ball that can scale up to an absolute insane degree. I'm talking like you're, you're rolling over structures, cars, people, everything. It actually gets kind of horrific if you want to think about it, but it's presented in this really cool, charming Japanese art style and just overall gameplay design that just makes it absolutely satisfying to play. Oh 
you really feel like you are kind of like this goofy monster sucking up everything in your path. But the best part is, is that you see everything you're destroying, everything you're grabbing, because it sticks to you in real time. It's a really interesting and unique concept. No other game has really nailed it quite like them in this series. And it just is oddly, oddly satisfying. So while it's not destruction, like you're not taking a flamethrower to a bunch of trees or something like that, like a lot of other games on this list, we thought this was absolutely worth mentioning because Katamari's destruction is a very unique spin. You see what I did there? I'm sorry. Anyway, moving on. Next over at number six, we have a game that you might not immediately think of. It's Minecraft. Yeah, I mean, Minecraft, when you break it down, is like the ultimate completely destructible game. You start off just breaking everything with your hands, you build tools, you break everything because everything in the game is made out of blocks. All or most of those blocks have certain ways that they can be absolutely destroyed. Not only that, there are also tons of enemies in this world that will also destroy everything around you. Remember getting your house blown up by a creeper? Yeah, that stuff still sucks. Plus the game just has so much room for experimentation where you can build explosives and really get crafty with how you blow things up. Or do a sandbox mode, build a convoluted explosion with tons of TNT crates and explode half your game world and watch your computer melt down. But really all in all, there's a lot to the destruction in this game and it's a bit smarter than you'd realize. Next over at number five, we have a game called Black. This is an old school now at this point, first person shooter from 2006. This is back when EA was focused on making some pretty inventive single player experiences and this was developed by Criterion Games, the folks behind the Burnout games. And they specifically wanted to do here like with what Burnout did for destruction, uh, they wanted to apply that to first person shooting. You're just shooting stuff, riddling everything with bullets, tearing apart wood, structures, shooting explosive barrels and just causing tons of chaos. It's absolutely ridiculous and zany. There's barely a story. It's really just about these crazy action set pieces and all of the destruction. Like that was 100% their focus. You're playing as Jack Keller, just kind of a gruff shooter every man. None of it really matters. What matters is the fun and the chaos and just pulling it all off. It had multiple difficulties. It had a high production value. It even had a score from Michael Giacchino, now famous for doing all the MCU music. And graphically and, and just effects wise, it did a really good job of making it satisfying to just blow everything apart. It certainly wasn't the best game and it was actually really, really short for the time. It wasn't really quite worth the price, but the experience was a hell of a thing. Next over at number four, we have the Battlefield games. Of course, we had to mention these because the destruction can be so much fun and there is a lot of it. And there's been varying levels of it where bad company games, it felt like you could destroy absolutely every single inch of a structure to some of the more scripted Levolution stuff that was still pretty awesome to topple a skyscraper in real time in the middle of a map during a multiplayer mission uh, to newer stuff like some really impressive weather effects destruction uh, to the way uh, snow on rooftops would react to explosions. There is a lot of destruction in the Battlefield games overall, and while it's not one where you can lay waste to every inch of a map, sure, it still absolutely deserves a mention in the gaming history textbook, specifically for developing a lot of the technology behind this destruction. Now down to number three, if we are talking games where you can destroy absolutely everything, let's talk about the Rampage games. Yeah, we're going way back. Remember Rampage on arcades and the earlier consoles where you'd play as a big creature, maybe a giant lizard, a giant monkey, whatever you want, and you just absolutely lay waste to buildings. Granted, the actual objective is to like survive and get through levels and you know kill all the enemies and stuff like that, but it was really satisfying just to take down a lot of these buildings and destroy these areas because the destruction was so tangible. Stuff took multiple hits. Things would slowly break apart. The more you kick a building, you see it shake. You see cracks develop. You punch out the windows until that building takes enough damage and it starts to go down and your character hops off of it, all while you're fighting off enemy soldiers and just eating people for health. This was truly a game where you could leave behind a level where absolutely everything was leveled in your path, completely destroyed down to the ground. Whether you were playing alone or with a friend, 
Man, these games really need to make a comeback, don't they? Maybe that's just me. Let me know in the comments. But anyway, let's move on to number two. The Red Faction series is another one that deserves its place in the history books of gaming for just really amping up the destruction and the technology behind it. From the original Red Faction, where if you had infinite ammo and a rocket launcher, you could blast a hole seemingly endlessly through a level. Like you point at like a rock wall or something and you were able to just completely degrade it in real time with explosives and it was so satisfying. Uh, moving on over to Red Faction Guerrilla, where the main name of the game was destruction. You were toppling all types of structures in an act of rebellion to take down the occupying force that you were unhappy with and you did it with all manner of explosions and weapons bombs, but also uh, they just gave your character a big hammer and you could really whack stuff with that hammer. Knock down support beams with it and totally topple something or steal a big tank or a truck and ram it through a building. All of it collapsed and broke apart in real time with some impressive physics, but the other part was that it wasn't a gimmick. The game knew that this was one of the best aspects to it, so it really emphasized in a lot of the missions absolute destruction, and it worked. It was an absolutely great game, totally underrated, and you should still check it out. They remastered it not too long ago. Next over at number one, of course, you know we were gonna mention it, Teardown, where the whole name of the game is destroying everything. It's like a voxel sandbox world where everything is completely destructible in a variety of different ways, with vehicles, with tools, with flaming trucks, explosives, hammers, tools, anything you want. There's an actual like really impressive campaign mode that just kind of revolves around destroying stuff and really creating the perfect heist and utilizing shortcuts and stuff. But then of course, like I said, there's a sandbox mode, which is basically the stuff of legend at this point just total destruction. This thing has mods, challenges, all types of user-generated content, and as long as you got the PC that can really handle all these physics demonstrations, it is something else. It is a sight to behold. The game has been out for a long time now, in some way, shape, or form through early access and stuff like that, but as of 2022, it's a fully featured release. There's tons to keep busy with, and it is absolutely worth the price if you love destroying everything. So consider Teardown. Check it out. Those are some games where you can destroy absolutely everything. There are plenty more out there, including one we couldn't fit as a bonus, Mercenaries. The Mercenaries games one and two had absolutely awesome destruction. Laying waste to enemy territory was really cool. It was really fun to topple massive buildings as just a weird quirky mercenary guy. Those games bring us back. But anyway, there are plenty of other games out there that feature awesome destruction. So we wanna hear from you guys in the comments. What are some of your favorites? Everybody's got one. It's super satisfying. If you like this video though, and maybe learned about a new game or two, because we definitely covered a lot of weird stuff, clicking the like button's all you gotta do it. Very much helps us out. And if you're new, consider subscribing, maybe hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.